This conference will now be recorded. Uh, so, as we have discussed initially, the intent of uh, this course is just the basics of Linux. Uh, it's not a full-fledged Linux course. And as I mentioned on the very first slide, right, this is not intended uh, for any kind of Linux certification or any Linux details. So, it's very basic introduction to all those who want to, let's say, take a Hadoop course. So they find it sometimes very difficult uh, to understand what's going on in the class or how to use Hadoop on Linux. So the intent is that. So in this course, uh, what things we will be covering? Uh, this is not a very long course. It is just about four to five hours course, uh, maybe one hour daily or one and a half hours. Like we will see how, how it goes. So we will be looking at topics like installation and the file system basics so we'll be looking at uh, distros and i will be talking mainly about centos which is the most commonly used in production uh, the other similar distro is red hat so both are same sent red hat and centos from the operation perspective uh, then we look at how we uh, format, create a file system and details of that. We'll look into the mount options. Uh, then we will look into YAM repositories, right? How we set up YAM repository. See, each of these topic is a very detailed topic, right? As I said, we cannot go into too much of detail unless and until somebody has a very specific question. So the intent is just to uh, make you uh, guys familiar with what is needed to understand or to install, let's say, any other stack on top of a Linux, mainly, let's say, Hadoop. Then we will also be looking at passphrase-less access, which is, uh, again, uh, needed when you need to connect to multiple nodes uh, from a particular uh, server. And we will look at some tools, maybe a Clush or Parallel SSH or PDSH, which we can use to connect to multiple nodes in one go. Then we will look also look at, look at important files and configurations, like uh, how you set up a host name, where is your IP, how the IP maps to a particular config. We will look at some of the common uh, network commands, like maybe uh, IP address, netstat, how to look for uh, what the IP resolves to. We will look at some basic concepts of DNS resolution, how it works on in Linux. We look at the environment variables, like setting up path, uh, how uh, a particular path plays a role, how is the environment set across uh, at the global level and at a user level, right? We look at what are bash profile, what is bash RC. Then we will also look at, look at some of the uh, config files like how we set up limits, how we set up sysctl parameters, and some very basic start and stop scripts. Another thing we will look at is logging and useful commands. Logging means uh, the logs in the system. We'll look at some of the important logs in Linux and how to read them. We'll look at some commands which will be helpful in debugging, like uh, your disk statistics, your maybe your utilization of uh, memory, uh, the system load, how, what processes are running, what is the load on the system, right? L list of open files, right? All those kind of things. Then we will look at some very basic command tools, uh, which you can use for manipulating file or quickly searching for a particular string in a very large log. So, right, and in the end, we will look at some of the common servers, like how you set up a DNS server, how you set up a MySQL, how you set up a, let's say, a web server, and how you set up an NFS server, right? So these I'm covering because all these things we need in your Hadoop uh, environment, right? DNS you need, MySQL you need, right? Let's say a high meta store, NFS server, you might need it for HA or any common sharing perspective, right? HTTP web proxy, you might need it for reverse proxying, load balancer and all. 
right so each one as i said it's a very detailed topic so we are not going into that many details we are just will be touching upon them so let's start with the installation and the file system basics so let me just go to whiteboard to explain certain concepts so first of all linux is slightly different from unix but i'm assuming uh, like most of the people in the class they are very new to linux so they would not be bothered about understanding unix or how it is different from uh, linux so originally uh, the main operating system which existed before the windows era was unix so unix was a system which was from different vendors like just a second okay pavan yeah not wrong right so we are not concerned about what unix was uh, we don't need to know the history it, uh, it there were different versions of unix which came up from like bell a88 tnt labs right and some uh, microsystem had its own solaris flavor of that system v and all those kind of things but mainly we uh, we will be talking here about linux so you can think linux is a more refined version of unix which was developed by uh, uh, linus uh, torvald right so uh, the main uh, posix compliant posix compliant means the, it's uh, on the standards of unix but the main thing was making it easily available for everyone so linux we have multiple distributions when we say distribution means uh, as i said unix were from were from very different flavors right it could be from sun microsystem then uh, hp had its own uh, hp ux which uh, was based on a different system AT, atnt had a different system right so uh, there were different uh, branches so which branch they took uh, as a foundation of the linux right going forward uh, there were slight diversions into that but mainly we will be only looking at uh, how they are used presently right because as, as i said this is a very basic fundamental linux course we are not we will not be talking about architecture let's say amd intel and all how they differ and all so when we talk about linux we can have either a debian debian based linux here you main one you have is ubuntu which is the most common one you might have heard of second is uh suze suze linux right these are the two most common ones in this category debian debian then you can have a bsd based right so which is free bsd free bsd this is actually not classified exactly truly a linux but it's again a fork of unix so free bsd we have right it's not a linux but it's a fork of unix another one is a company called red hat it came with a distribution of linux they took the linux kernel so when we say linux linux is actually a kernel right when we say linux linux is a kernel kernel is the core of the operating system which does the translation from a user commands or from the user space to the a most more privileged uh, space where it interacts with the hardware so kernel linux is actually a kernel so on top of that you can develop a lot of utilities plugins uh, maybe a GUI, maybe a printer driver, maybe a mouse driver, a lot of other things, right? So they sit into a uh, abstraction a little bit higher than the kernel. So Linux is a kernel. It can be a Debian flavor, Ubuntu, uh, Suze and all. It could be a Red Hat. In Red Hat uh, Linux, 
we have Red Hat is a from a company called Red Hat. So it is a licensed version. The free version of the exactly same one is called CentOS. Right, CentOS. So they are exactly same. No difference in them. Only differences in the branding. And this one is maintained by a company called Red Hat. So let's say tomorrow I am uh, running an operating system in a within an organization and I hit some issue. So if I'm using a subscription from Red Hat, I can go to Red Hat and ask for support. Like it may be a bug, they might release some patch or I may be stuck with some issue, they will help me out, right? But CentOS is a open distribution, but exactly the same. So it's based on what kind of criticality you have within a company and what kind of uh, team you have, right? So many organizations, open source companies, uh, they will be using uh, CentOS because they can uh, easily maintain uh, their own data and they can uh, do their own bug fixing, right? When I say open source company, not the small startups, but let's say the companies of the scale of, let's say, Yahoo, Google and all. So they might not necessarily go with Red Hat, but important difference to note here is it's a licensed version, Red Hat. CentOS is a free distro, but exactly same boundaries. In addition to that, there are many, right? Every day, uh, initially, uh, every few days, a new version of Linux used to come, like you may have a Slackware, you may have a Kali, uh, right? So different versions of Linux will be there, but these are the most common one. So we'll be talking about CentOS in this uh, class. Why? Because this is the closest to the Red Hat, and these are the most commonly deployed in production you will see. You will see Ubuntu as well, but that scale is very less. You will not see into a large scale deployment, especially as we said, our main aim is to Hadoop for Hadoop. So in Hadoop, you will not see many deployments with Ubuntu. Most deployments will be with Red Hat and CentOS. Okay, so now let's look at uh, the options. So installation of Linux or any operating system, right? For that matter, Windows, I can either do it on a bare metal. Bare metal means I take a hardware and install an operating system directly on it. Means let's say in your system, you have, let's say a bootable CD drive. You put your CD or a DVD, you boot from it, you install the operating system directly on the hardware, right? Means the operating system which you are installing, the kernel of that directly interacts with the hardware of that machine. So it's bare metal. Or I can do virtualization. Virtualization. So nowadays, whenever we talk about cloud, this virtualization is very important. Initially, when we used to talk about virtualization, uh, like uh, we were only confined about, okay, you are taking a machine, maybe you are running a VMware or some other version of virtualization or a Citrix and all. But nowadays, uh, the span is very large and all cloud-based deployments are virtualized, right? Because there will be some physical server and on which you will be getting a virtual load. So, Important difference to is bare metal or virtualization, virtualized environment. So when we say bare metal, uh, again, uh, we don't need to go into all these details. I can have a virtualization stack installed directly on the bare metal. For example, I may have ESX server, which is, for, let's say, for, for example, from VMware. I can put that directly on the hardware and start is doing um, virtual machines directly inside that or I can install let's say a Windows machine like how I have installed I can install any Windows machine or a Linux machine and inside these machines I can install multiple VMs let's say inside v a Windows I'm installing one Linux machine maybe one Windows machine and maybe another maybe Ubuntu uh, some another Ubuntu version right within a Windows machine. Or similarly on Linux, I can install Windows and some other Linux distro as well. 
so base machine can be anything so let me show you my windows operating system so i'm using here windows 10 uh, so my systems configuration is uh, 32 gb right you can see 32 gb uh, is my desktop and it's a 64 bit operating system so it's a base operating system which is windows 10 so on this i can install another version of windows inside it i can install linux multiple versions of linux depending upon how much resources my base system has this is my base system right so as i have 32 gb so i may be able to install multiple machines inside this machine which can run at the same time right so let me show you one environment we will go into detail of this so for example you look this is my virtualization environment i'm running a software we, i will tell you what all these softwares are so you can see i am running multiple vms all these are linux machines i'm running about 10 linux machines inside this one and i have another software where i'm running another uh, about eight to ten machines right eight to ten machines which are running inside the base machine so each one it's an independent os like how you have a physical machine it's an independent machine but it's virtualized right the application running inside it the operating system running inside it doesn't know right doesn't differ in any way whether it's virtualized or base machine so how we do that so i have a license for both right i have a license for uh, what we say workstation vmware workstation but you don't need to take a license what you can do you can use a free tool called virtual box so originally this tool was from sun microsystem then it got acquired by oracle so that's why it's now called oracle virtual box so if i go to uh, google and i search right let me show you if i go to google and i search for virtual box right so it will give me a download link i will go here right i can download the virtual box so which virtual box i will download depending on what operating system i am running base operating system so in my case i'm running windows so i will go here windows if you are running linux any or mac you will download that particular version of virtual box so once you download it it's a simple install how you install a windows application you install it it will create uh this uh not these listing i will show you all this it will install a simple software like this which will be your virtual machine so now after that what we have to do is we have to download a version of centos if i say centos let's say 7 download right i will click this i go to centos download so i have an option either i can download a complete dvd dvd means it will be around four and a half gb if i go uh, click on this it will take me to a mirror this will be around 4.2 gb so it will take some time for you to download but still our uh, internet speeds are quite good still it will be quick or you can download a minimal iso minimal iso means the minimal a cd which is required for you to install linux and boot up your system right so i've already downloaded this minimal version i click it here and it downloads right so you download this so the presently uh, 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 centos or red hat we are on version 7 right version 7 means the first part i'm talking about 7 not after dot this is called the major version 7.6 so 6 is the minor version 7 is the major version so we are on version 7 so you you will still see deployments of 6 many places right so in my case i'm running both 6 and 7 uh, so uh, you don't need to worry about what's the difference between 6 and 7 um, but 7 is you can think is it is the latest one which is running and 
uh, with the latest patches and latest uh, software versions. So it's uh, good to have it in the production if you're starting today rather than six. But obviously there were uh, architectural differences also within six and seven, right? So we will not be going into that. So let me show you how we do the installation. So to save time, I've already downloaded uh, this minimal ISO. Let me show you in software. See, I have multiple uh, DVDs with me, which I have downloaded ISOs 6.5, 6.9, 7, uh, the right, see the size, 6 GB, 4.3 GB, and the minimal one is only few MB, which I have downloaded, right? So we'll be using this for our installation. So what I do for this is I do is click on new. I give it any name, right? So let's say I give a name called lab machine, right? And I say what operating system I'm installing inside this VM, right? It's not, we are not talking about the Windows based machine, right? We are running Windows, but inside this virtual software, which we have launched, what operating system I will be running. So I will select Linux here and I will select the version of the Linux I want, right? So sometimes what will happen, the exact version, as I said, there are n number of uh, Linux distribution. You, will, you might not see all listed here. So what you can do is, let's say if I'm having Red Hat here, you can select Red Hat 64. As I said, it's closest to CentOS. Or what you can do is you can select other Linux 64 bit, right? You will not select uh you will not select 32 bit right you will select 64 bit so what is the difference between 64 bit and 32 bit it's an addressing space difference 32 bit is obsolete kind of obsolete now so it has a limitation of 4 gb um, memory address space right so only you can have a memory up to uh, 4 gb which is addressable but with 64 bit you can have a very large memory address space so I'm going with 64 bit, right? Which is uh, standard nowadays. You will uh, you will not see 32 uh, bit uh, operating systems anymore. So I say next. What is the memory you want to give to the machine, right? The virtual machine by default, one GB. I'm saying, okay, fine. I say next. You, do you want to create a virtual hard drive? Virtual hard drive means hard drive for the machine which we are creating which we have called uh, lab i say recommended size of the weight 8 gb i say create so it is asking me what kind of virtual machine i want to create do i want to create vdi vhd or vmdk right there are different versions of virtual machines uh this the first one is very native to this software, right? Virtual box disk image, right? It's very native to this software. So if I create disk in this, the advantage is I can resize the disk after creating it, right? Let's say I create a 8 GB disk and I realized my operating system disk got filled, filled with whatever I, I wrote into that. Then I can dynamically expand that disk in VDI format. But disadvantage is I cannot use the disk anywhere outside this software, VirtualBox. Another option is I can use VMDK, right? VMDK is a virtual machine disk. I can use it here. I can use it inside the other software also, which I showed you, which I'm running a second software, VMware software. So I can use the same virtual machine across two softwares, but I cannot resize it. So best is leave it to VDI if you are using VirtualBox. I'll say next. So it will say you want to dynamically create it or create it fixed size. So if I say next here, so what it is, um, it, what does it mean is, let's say I am saying 8 GB here. So if I'm saying dynamically allocated, so it will immediately, the moment we go and click finish, Immediately it will create a virtual machine, but it does not mean it will create an 8 GB disk immediately. It will dynamically create that disk as needed, 
right? So when the virtual machine is created, I am install, inst uh, installed operating system and I'm writing something. Let's say I write a file, one MB file. So that disk will be created at that time. It will be one MB. Then I write again data, it will again expand. So it will be slower in process, right? It will be slower in process. If I use fixed disk, it will create the entire disk in the very first go, right? So it's your choice, right? How you want to do. If you are running low on your disk space in the base system, go with dynamically allocated, it will be a bit slow. But anyway, we are not running production system. So if we are only testing, so it doesn't matter. So I'm saying dynamically allocated. So I'm saying how much space? 8 GB. And I say create, right? So the moment I click press create here, see that lab machine is created. So lab machine is created means it has created a machine which is now capable of installing a Linux inside it, right? So let's say I click right, click on this, go to settings. I can change anything which I have set up before, right? I go to system, I can change the memory, I can change the number of cores I want to give to that machine, all those kind of things. Right, I can change all the storage, audio, network, everything. Right, so now let's look at one by one. Let's go to system. System means it has floppy, optical, means CD, hard drive, and multiple things. So it is saying boot order, right. So when this operating system starts, when let's say when I switch power on this lab machine, it needs to boot from a media. It could be your floppy, it could be a hard drive, it could be your CD or any DVD or optical disk or network. So I have to tell it the boot order. So floppy anyway, we don't have floppy. So what I'm saying, the first boot order is a disk. Which disk? As DVD disk, optical disk. Second is hard drive. So I'm changing the order. I go, I'm going to storage. So this is the lab disk which we created, 8 GBC, but only 2 MB is used because it was dynamic. So I go to CD, ID controller. I press the icon which is in front of it. So here I can give a physical CD means in my machine CD drive, I can put my CVD, CD or DVD if I have of that operating system which we were talking about CentOS. If I don't have that, the ISO which we downloaded from the link which I showed you, I click here and I will say choose virtual disk. So I will give the path, see this one, I will give the path of that, right? The minimum one, maximum one, whatever it is, right? I select that. I say open. So minimal one, okay. One disadvantage for new users could be, where if I going with the minimal one, it will be non-graphical. Means it will be command line only. So if you are a Windows user or Windows fan and coming to Linux, you might struggle. So you can go with the full version of your uh, distro, full version of your DVD. Right. So let's say I can choose any other. Let, let me choose you 6.9 example. Right. So and uh, nothing changes uh, in terms of operation, but I can uh, choose that or I can choose this minimal one. Right. So I say open. Let's say I will choose the minimal one just to give you a feel of command line. Otherwise, in graphical, you can anyway use mouse. So I say open. See that CD is now attached here. Now I will go to network. So in the network one, it's saying me the virtual machine which I'm installing, will the networking be enabled for it or not, right? So if I take this box, it will be enabled. How it will be enabled? Again, this is a, again a, a, a detailed topic. Uh, by default, it will be NAT, means network address translation, it will be doing, means it will be doing a translation between the interface of virtual machine and the physical machine of where it is installed, right? The base machine, right? And I have to write a NAT rule, right? So if you are not from networking background, obviously don't do that because you will not understand how it is working, right? So best is choose bridge adapter. Bridge adapter is the 
adapter means the physical interface of your base machine right where my windows is running the same interface will be attached to my virtual machine also so now i can talk from my virtual machine to my base machine and also to the outside world means to the internet if i choose internal network only it can only talk to my base machine if i choose host only adapter it can talk to only within the virtual machine right so you choose only bridge adapter to make things easy i say okay right everything is set up now i right click and say start i say a normal start i say in starting give me an option here see the screen it is giving you an option you want to test this media and install centos or you want to install centos so we don't want to test this media because anyway we know that the media is not a dvd or a cd which might have scratches right that's not the case we are giving a an iso from our system base system so there is no concept of scratch so media will be all right so we are saying directly installs centos i hit enter so it will take some time it will start see in the lower screen it is showing activity disk activity cd activity right all those activities it is showing so in the physical its installation everything is same as you will do in a physical machine right in the physical machine also you will insert a dvd and you will say boot first boot by dvd and then it will prompt you for all these things which we will be doing now It's asking what which language you want to use obviously english continue then it's asking us any time zone or keyboard setting special layouts you want to change let's say i want to change for example let's say date time right It takes some time for it to come. Let's say I want to put Australia. Let's say Melbourne, right? So I am putting my time 10:05 p.m. Uh, date is 9th. Okay, it's fine. I say done, and I am saying enable NTP Network Time Protocol means it will automatically update the time from the internet. Oh. Uh, network is not enabled that's why it's not in a, uh, putting that <coughs> network and host name i click here right i'm switching on the network see it automatically got the ip from my dscp server and the network phase interface is up right again how it got an ip and all right leave it right this is all uh, again uh, networking thing because uh, there's a dscp run uh, server running uh, inside my house and uh, in, in even if there's no dscp server running your modem at home your which is provided by your internet provider will assign an ip you say done i click on partitioning right so for first time users you can simply say automatic formatting automatic partitioning right you don't need to specify what should be the partition size right but for the sake of understanding right as i said like it's good to know what kind of partitions we have so we can configure i will configure partitioning manually i can select that right or what we can do is we can do it quickly install and i will manually show you 
how we can partition it right so i can say okay leave it this way uh, the automatic one i say done right so now i say begin installation so now it will be saying set some root password set a password which you should remember right do not forget that right? there's a way of breaking it but for the sake of beginners remember whatever the password you have set right so it's it has started see installing packages so it is installing packages here so let it install in the meanwhile let me explain you some basic things here so it is installing let me just connect to any other node which might already be running okay right so i think you can see my screen see once your system is installed right it will be coming to a command prompt right this is your command prompt right forget about what commands i'm executing very simple one i'm listing some files and all pwd means present working directory right so it is telling me all those so here there's no c colon d colon e colon those kind of things right even in windows it is not there right uh, i'm not sure how deep you guys have gone in windows also there is no concept of c colon d colon e colon it's only a con uh, abstraction for our convenience right at the back end the name is still this way slash slash uh, the part to the drive right and which is mapped to a c colon for our convenience right so uh, so let's say if i say l uh, cd root right so in linux everything starts with root file system right here you will see i have said cd back uh, cd forward slash so forward slash is called root right it is where everything in linux starts this is the topmost file system right under that i can have multiple directories like you can have bin you can have boot you can have dev etc home live opt mnt media right so many directories you can have where user temp right all this you can have but what has happened is as i have have only one disk and i told it to automatically partition it so what it has done is it has created a very simple uh, partition right and put everything in the directories there right you can see everything it has put in the directories there so but how the directory structure is let me explain you on the whiteboard in the meanwhile the installation is going on so the topmost file system is forward slash this is called root anything you create you create it under it right let's say i want to create a home directory directory called home it does not exist or it does not have any presence unless it exists under slash so it will be slash home similarly i will have slash boot for example I will have slash bin right slash lib slash s bin right so there are directories uh, for specific purpose right as i said we are not going to all detail but the basic one as you can see from home it will be users home directory boot it will be the partition or the directory where the files or binaries related to the booting of the operating system will be kept bin will be all binaries will be kept as bin will be system binaries will be kept which will be can be executed by a privileged user means by a system admin not by a normal user 
live means here the libraries will be kept right i can have slash war where as well in where i can have means where log let's say i can have log i can have temp space temporary space right so i can have in our case as you have seen there is only one hard drive and i said create partitioning automatically so what it did it created the whole disk as one partition right and then mount created different directories in it but i could have done like this simply i could have done let's say i could have taken a hard drive one and given it as root i could have taken a second hard drive hd2 and i could have given it as slash home i could have taken another hard drive i could have given it as slash where slash log right different different hard drives to different different mount points right also there is a logic right for example i will not give a separate hard drive to let's say bin or usr right again as i said this is not a linux class because if i do that if i have to do to a recovery mode and my mounting happens after that so i will not have access to binaries and all for my recovery right so we will not do that but it is possible so let me see where the installation has reached so let me see okay it's still going on in the meanwhile let's go back to the system so here so if i do df hyphen h disk free hyphen h means human readable format if i give simply df so you see it's telling me some numbers right which <coughs> i have to bring in a calculator to calculate or just count okay it's like saying uh, it's in kilobyte blocks so it's i have to divide by a k or i can say hyphen h human readable format so now it makes more sense it's telling me gb total disk is gb uh, all these mount points are there right and some locations are there right so this is not the one which we are installing this is already installed one right so here you you are seeing a separate disk also which is in this operating system i have two disks uh, in this virtual machine one is dev sdb1 last line you are seeing and this one more at the top one which is the default one so once it installs i will show you how we do that right so important thing here is a machine will have a name if i execute the hostname command it will tell a name right which i have set up here explicitly in which we have not done in our another case so we will see what does that mean a host name if i say if config if config means how in windows you have ip config in uh, linux you have if config it is telling me what is the ip address my system has got you can see 192.168.1.68 is the address which i have got i can do ip addr as well right which is the command in new new versions of linux so you will see the same one output i am getting so i can do let's say resolution ns lookup ns lookup means name server lookup on something www.google.com right so i am not talking here presently how it is working right we will see that later on but uh, like uh, my our system is i'm just showing you after the installation we will be making the system ready how it is getting that right so if i do cat slash etc this config network scripts if cfg right in this path you have all your interfaces right so which we have not touched upon the ip which we are seeing here it's actually coming from this path right you can see here it is coming from this path 
So in the first uh, class today, after the installation is done, we need to first thing is understand this file system. Very important that what is root, what is a mount point, what it does, right? So let's say if I'm sitting here, if I say mkdir, let's say pawan, right? It creates a directory called pawan, right? You can see it created a directory called pawan. So if I do a pawn ls f and l on pawn, it will be listing me things inside that directory. So that directory is empty. So if I give hyphen d option with that, it is listing me that directory. So it is telling me there's a directory called pawn. The leftmost d which you see in that, it is telling me it's a directory. And after that, it's telling me permissions. Seven five five. Right, so uh, which we'll be also talking. So if I create a simple file, touch, test, right? And I do same thing on that, ls hyphen l. So you see, it does not show you D in the leftmost one. It does no D. So it means it's a file. So file is always created with the permission 644. Directory is always created with the permission 755 right so i'm using the word always right but it's not like that i'm logged in as root that's why it's coming like that it's a concept called u mask right again we'll see that later on right u mask is defining what will be the permission of the directory and the file when it is created so let me see whether installation has happened or not yet oh, it's still going on yeah so in the meanwhile, let me explain you a little bit about permissions. So in the permissions, we have every file. First of all, in Linux, everything is a file, whether it's a directory, whether it's a device, even a hard drive is a file. Everything is a file. So file, when you say permission, It will have one, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. And one bit at the starting, right? Let me just change the color of this with some other thing, right? So it will have 10 bits. So it will be like this. Three. Oh. That did not come. Let me just erase this. Oh, some issues with the pen. Okay. So this three. This three, and let me put one more black here. And this three, this three, right? This is called owner. Who is the owner of a particular file or a directory? The group. Of file or a directory and others. Let me write with others with O T H E R others, right? And the first one, it's telling whether it's a file or a directory. So it could be D here or it could be blank. If it's D, it means it's a directory. If it's blank, it means file. But there are another things also like C for a character device and all that. But we don't need to go. As I said, this is not a Linux course. So for from a file perspective, it could be D or blank. So when we say owner, owner means, let's say I am the 
user who created a file. So I am the owner, right? Let's say Aman is the user who created that file. So Aman is the owner of that file. So these three bits are defining the permission for that. So if I say uh, this permission over here is, let's say, what owner can do? Can owner read the file? Right? There will be R here. Can can owner write the file? What is this? Can owner execute the file? Can a group read the file? Can a group write the file? And execute the file. Similarly, can the group others read the file? write the file and execute the file so what is a group and what are others so let's say i created a file called file one and the user of that file is aman aman user is the user of that file so aman is the owner aman is the owner and this aman can be member of a group that group is let's say admin admins Right, so I created a group called admins and in that admins group there could be one user Aman there could be another user called Pawan two users are member of this group so now I create a file owner is Aman and what are the group permissions I can say owner can read the file write the file execute the file but the group owner can only read the file. Let's say Paman should not be able to uh, read that file, uh, modify that file, right? So I will remove that W from that option, right? So it will be just read. So others mean anybody other than group and Aman, what they can do? Can they read, write, execute or not, right? So if I don't have anything given in that field, it means they will not have permission. If I want read, write, and execute, I will give them some particular permission. So execute means, we might think that execute, let's say I want to give a user a read permission inside a directory, right? So if I don't have an execute permission, I will not be able to change the directory, right? So let's say there's a directory called Pawan, which we just created, I will show you on the system. And I do CD means CD to that Pawn directory. Let's say I'm a user called Aman example, right? And I want to CD to a directory of Pawan and Pawan and we Aman and Pawan both are member of this admin group. But Pawan has is the owner. Pawan has not given group permission read and uh, he has not given a permission to write and execute. He has given me only read permission, thinking that let's safeguard it, right? So he has given me only to the group. He has given only read permission. So what will happen is I have the read permission. But what will happen is to change the directory, I should be able to execute i should have execute permission so i will not be able to change the directory so i will need execute permission as well right but i can cat a file if i know the path right we will see that right all those things are little bit uh, tricky and little bit advanced topics not for beginners but okay so now it's complete i say click on reboot so my reboot is done. <laughs> so I'm rebooting it. See now, 
it is giving me an option rescue mode and the normal mode right so because my operating system is installed so by default if i don't uh, do any action it will automatically boot within three seconds from the bootloader and it will come to my screen <laughs> And just starting up. <coughs> so I will log in here. So root user, user will be root. Password will be whatever you have set at that time, right? So that will be the password. So now if I say host name here, you see we have not set the host name. So if I want to set the host name, I can say host name CTL. I don't need to remember the command. I can give hyphen H help. So it can tell me if I want to set the host name, I have to give host name hyphen set host name command, right? Let's say I want I want to set this as lab.netzilon.com. Right? So now Clear the screen. If I do the hostname again, you'll see lab.netzilon.com has been set up. So this is specific to CentOS 7, right? In 6, there were different ways of doing it. We are not touching that. If I do if config, there's no command if config, right? Which I showed you in the other machine. Why? By default, it's a minimal install. So it will not have that. I have to use IP ADDR command. So you can see the IP is 192.168.1.99. Right? 1.99. So I don't need to uh, go from here. Let me just go it from the outside of the screen. Connect here so it will be easy for you to uh, look at it. Right? So I will say 99. Right, so I'm connecting from outside my Windows machine, right? Here it's easy to type, right? My, I'm using a PuTTY. PuTTY is a Windows uh, SSH client. In uh, Mac and Linux, you don't need a client because you can directly connect from terminal. If I want to connect to my virtual machine, I'm using a software called PuTTY or PuTTY, whatever you call, American or European. So, <clears throat> So now, so let's say if I want to show you NS lookup, right? Let's say lookup, it's a command not found, right? If config, command not found. Because we did a minimal install. All those things are not there. It is doing a bare minimal install. Just using very bare minimal disk. You can see it has hardly used one GB to install the entire Linux for you on the disk, right? So it has kept things minimal. So now if I want to install something, so when we have installed from CD, what it does by default, it has an ability or capability to connect to the source on the internet and download any package which you ask it to right provided it is able to connect to internet so obviously when we set up uh, the ip address so the intent was it got an ip which is 192.168.1.99 and i can connect to internet using that right because it got an ip i can go to google and all those so how it knows where to fetch packages from by default whenever you install operating system it automatically creates a file under this path so many files see etc yum dot repos dot d repos stand for repositories d means directories yum repository directories so this is a config file called let's say base if i cat that it is has the address on the internet to go and fetch a package so let's say if i say 
yum install example any package which we wanted that right so bind utils i know the package names but i will tell you later on how to find it okay let me tell you now only because yum will do in the second class so let's say i wanted to find if config command is saying not found so i want to find which package provides that config if config what provides bin like this i'm asking yum tell me what provides that command because every command will be either under bin or s bin so i'm telling it star it could be s bin or directly bin if config what provides me that so it's telling me net tools provide that so now let's do yum install net hyphen tools right so everything it's downloading from the internet so obviously i should have internet connectivity and it will use my bandwidth now it has installed now if i do if config see the command has come ns lookup let's see ns lookup is not still there no which command provides ns lookup let's look at that right i know it's for part of bind utils but just for your sake right see the tool bind utils it's telling it's part of bind utils so i they say yum install bind hyphen utils and hyphen y why means it will not prompt me whether you want to install it or not it will directly install it for me see it is installed automatically it will do any dependency installations dependency checks mean let's say if i'm trying to install a package x it might say i need a package y for package x to be installed right so if i don't do yum if i do rpm the old way of package manager i have to resolve the dependencies but when i say yum it automatically takes care of now let's do ns look up now see the command is there www.google.com it is telling me the address right google.com right so here you can see in my dns dscp server i have configured the name servers for google so it's going to google's uh, name servers and asking the address right address of a particular site right and it, it can be any site yahoo.com right? whatever it you can ask it is asking the google server name server right uh, anyway it will not directly go to google name server there might be a cache in intermediately somewhere so this is how it is setting up that so so df hyphen h it is telling me the disk right so now in the system look there is only one single disk right which is sda dev sda right which it has given everywhere right if i do f disk hyphen l it will tell me that it has only one disk sda you can see here sda it has only one disk what is this mapper and all those this is all lvm right which is again a logical volume management concept not needed for you for hadoop so <clears throat> only one disk it has so the disk naming conventions will be sda sdb sdc like that right as if you are aware of hardware how hardware looks like it could be hd means if it's a old scuzzy id 40 pin connector kind of thing it will be sd if it's a scuzzy uh, device right sda it could be b c d e like that and it could also be a different letter than a d as well depending upon which controller it is on 
right again not a topic for you so any questions you have now tell me till now right this is a very basic installation which we did so what you need you need either vmware's workstation or you need virtual box right virtual box is free you download it download the iso and then you can put it and install it into it so important thing for you guys will be understanding the file system right because all the windows user will find it a bit tricky that how we are going here right so cd where right here if i do cd where if i want to see where i am pwd i say present working directly it will tell me where i am sitting right ls hyphen l where log inside where also i can have multiple directories where tmp where logs right the common one where log is the most common one where we write the logs so as i said we will not be talking about best practices and all in this class because question might come like okay what if temp fails it should be a separate hard drive separate mount point right what about the performance log has a lot of ios right we are not talking about all those things right but if any specific question comes, then I will take up. Otherwise, we are just going with the basic run. Okay. So another thing which you need to be aware of, aware of means you can do a study on, uh, maybe search on Google. Uh, in CentOS 6 or Red Hat 6 versus 7, how what is the main difference? the initialization daemon has changed initialization daemon means when your linux system boots how it boots which process starts first right what is the sequence which process starts after what right so it is decided by some initialization process right so in 6 it is different which is called init right i n i t in 7 it is called system d so there are improvements right in six what used to happen was the startup process was sequential means let's say a service x will not start unless a service y has successfully started right there will be sequence numbers given in the uh, directory rc etc rc dot d where it will be saying what will be the order of services to start in each run level but now it is not that it starts all in parallel and it has done a lot of cleanup but what things you need to be aware of the run levels right we are not talking about uh, init and system d differences that i will leave it to you how much you want to explore but we will look at the run level etc init init tab there is a file called init tab whether it's six, seven, doesn't matter which version. It's this file called init tab. Init stands for initialization, right? So they have given a small name init tab. So what it is doing is whenever your system boots up, what all features your systems will have? Will it have GUI? Will it have networking enabled? What kind of capabilities it has, right? So the run level defines that. If I'm saying run level five, right, what does it mean? Right, so I can say, let's say system CTL get default, right? So if I'm saying, let's say run level one, it's a single user mode means only one user can log in no networking nothing if i'm saying run level three no graphicals right run level five the full system with graphics and all so in production we don't need and all mostly we'll be running uh, run level three in production even when we run uh, run uh, run level five there will be no gui components installed we will be very selective in what services it starts 
so i can say for example in it zero it will shut down my system zero means shut down six means restart five means start all start start services with graphical three means without graphic right so when i'm saying five it does not mean it will start graphics if graphics are not installed right so it is obviously those packages must be there so let's say i have all those graphics packages everything installed if i go to run level five it will enable them everything starts up if i go to run level three they will not start if i go to run level one single user mode no uh, one else log can log in no networking components no nothing no internet connectivity no network connectivity nothing right so there are different levels troubleshooting level there are some reserved levels in between which we do uh, which are reserved for future growth uh, like there are a, a level seven eight and all that the, the, as well but they are not used by default it is <laughs> six reboot zero shutdown i can also say reboot command reboot command means in it six i can say shut down hyphen i can also give a time when i want to shut down right if i do an H option here it is giving a halt right let me just cancel it see shut down scheduled for look at the time 22 25 second est right so i can say shut down minus c as well so it will send a message to everybody on the system logged in onto the system saying system will go to shut down at that particular time so i can say halt when i can say halt now or i can give a future date it will automatically shut down i can give hyphen reboot when or i can give init zero init six or reboot commands if i say uptime it tells me the time the system started up what time uh, till what from what time the system has been up system has been up from last 17 minutes load is very low again all these three has a meaning what is the current five minute 15 minute load averages what is the current time what is the uptime two users are logged in right so i can say last here so it will tell me who all are logged in here so why it is telling me two logged in one i'm logged in from this session other i'm logged in from the system directly where I was working, I showed you, right? I, I was logged in from here. So I can, if I log out from here, right, I've logged out here. And now if I do last here, uptime, yeah, it will go there. So it will tell me when was the reboot done and all those kind of things. Okay, guys, I think uh, that's good enough for first class. So tomorrow we will uh, continue with our uh, this part, right? I will tell you about formatting, file system, mount options, a little bit more into this, and YAM repository setup. Right, passphrase less, right? I will, this will not take much time. I will go into that and tell you all this in one go. Then we will look into uh, this. Maybe two things we can do tomorrow.